Hi, everybody, and welcome to the show. It is great to have you with us. And we do begin with an explosive exclusive, a look at Katie Couric's cutthroat new memoir, Going There. And boy, does she ever. The veteran TV journalist blasting her former female colleagues, including that of Martha Stewart and Ashley Banfield, while admitting her sympathy for disgraced Today Show co-anchor Matt Lauer. It is all right here. I learned from the Daily Mail on a heck of a scoop they got that one-time colleague of mine, Katie Couric, has written a memoir. For 40 years, the world has trusted Katie Couric to deliver the truth on television. And welcome to today on this Wednesday morning, everyone. I'm Katie Couric. But in spite of her sunny morning news attitude, behind the scenes, Couric's truth was she was freezing out fellow female journalists. Daily Mail TV scoring an advanced look at Couric's new memoir, going there and in it, she torches her Today Show predecessor, Deborah Norville. As we've been reporting, Soviet leaders in Iraq's Tariq Aziz are still fine-tuning that proposal for peace. Couric writes that Norval had a major relatability problem because her relentless perfection turned off morning show viewers. But Norval isn't the only woman bearing Couric's wrath. What kind of man do you think you're looking for if you had to... Oh, someone of... like your fiancé. Really? Yeah. Well, stay away from him, Martha. <laughs> Though the pair laughs in this 2014 throwback, Katie jabs Martha Stewart in going there, writing, it took some healthy humbling, prison will do that, for her to develop a sense of humor. But one person does earn Katie's sympathy, her former Today Show co-anchor, Matt Lauer. After he was fired from NBC for sexual misconduct, Katie admits she texted him, quote, I love you and care about you deeply. I looked up to her for years and years and years. I still do. News Nation anchor Ashley Banfield was Katie's NBC colleague in the early 2000s. And as Katie saw it, her competition. She writes, for a minute there, Ashley Banfield was the next big thing. I'd heard her father was telling anyone who'd listen that she was going to replace me. Now, Banfield is setting the record straight. Her father, John, was in a care home, nearly senile, when he said he wished his daughter had a desk job like Katie instead of reporting from Afghanistan. That is a far cry from being able to even leave that facility, let alone telling anyone who would listen. So that hurt my feelings deeply, and I hope Ms. Couric corrects the record on that. News Nation's very own Ashley Banfield is joining us now. And Ashley, it's really great to have you here. Welcome to Daily Mail TV season five. And I know you've got a lot going on with News Nation, but I, I want to talk to you about uh, this exclusive first look that Daily Mail has gotten about the bombshell memoir from Katie Couric, a former colleague of both of us. Uh, what do you think about what's written about you and that she thought you were a threat? Um, you know, I'm flattered <laughs> because at the time, Thomas, I was, you know, a a nobody and and katie was everything and so it's nice to to know that but at the same time it's disappointing to to think that um you know she wouldn't consider a helping hand i, I think mentoring other people in this business has been one of the most fulfilling things for my career and it is kind of nice to know that um that yeah even the 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 the, the biggest shiniest star um thought that i was you know worthwhile <laughs> who knew i would think now that hearing this yes it has to be uh kind of flattering but at the same time aggravating you want an apology right would would you forgive katie if she actually apologized to you oh in a heartbeat sure um my only real offense uh was that she mischaracterized my dad my late father who was you know um in in ailing parts of his life he was in a a care facility, he was senile, he was near 80, and um, a New York Post reporter had gotten his home phone number and uh, dialed his room and asked him if he was worried about me in Afghanistan. And of course, as a dad, he said, of a, I think a 34-year-old daughter, um, yes, I'm worried about her, and they should bring her home and give her a desk job like Katie's. That's a far cry from, you know, um, gallivanting about town and touting me as her uh, successor it just wasn't the case. So that was that was harmful and hurtful. Um, but listen, I think Katie probably had a point too, right? I think for a lot of women, certainly in the in the 90s and 2000s, this job wasn't easy and we were always feeling like we were replaceable. And I'm shocked to hear that someone of her ilk and her enormous talent and, and success level was um, threatened at all. And last question, are you surprised Katie wrote a book like this? I am. I'm surprised. Yes, I continue to see Katie as a leader in this industry and as a trailblazer and as one of the best to ever grace our TV screens. 
um, legacies take a long time to build and they take an instant to tarnish. And I, I hope this isn't her legacy. Um, I still think she's la creme de la creme and, and uh, a shining example of how to, how to be authentic in this job and, and on television. Absolutely. And we're going to see how this story all plays out when the final version of Going There is released. That's coming up in late October. Again, Ashley's show, Banfield, airs weeknights at 10 p.m. Eastern on News Nation. Ashley, again, thanks so much and good luck with everything moving forward. Thank you.